Hi, good afternoon. Um, so I'm Andrew McLaughlin from the CTAO group from Cisco. So my, uh, uh, kind of predominantly working on open daylight at the moment. So we've been looking at open daylight infrastructure and how to get it deployed. Um, just a bit about me is my background's actually in working at service providers, not working at vendors. So I, I moved to Cisco about three or four years ago. So I have a slightly non-vendor take on things I'm trying to do. So I don't know if it makes you want to run away or stay. But so this, this is a badly named talk, um, which is my fault, which is on uh, sort of notifications and workflows for open daylight. So one of the first things I wanted to describe really is what have we been doing with open daylight to enable some sort of notification process? Because we, we really don't have anything. So the, the first couple of slides are just a walk through on what we all know and love for today's kind of EMS, but this is not a talk on EMS. Okay. So I think for anybody who's worked on networks, we all kind of know the service assurance model. So today it's a lot of polling and screen scraping. Um, we, we really haven't moved network management from about 1975 onwards, really. We've got a lot of new tools that we've developed over the years to kind of do stats and collection, but predominantly it's still kind of a, a, a pull or a screen scraping kind of model. Um, and we're sort of looking at open daylight and going, we really need to do something better than this. But there's also a lot of pushback from service providers and enterprises now going, we just kind of had it with this model. There's, I worked at BT for a while actually, and they had almost 300 network management platforms trying to poll every single element in the network. And uh, it, it, just, it just doesn't work. So I see folks nodding. I, I don't need to explain it any further. So we've been kind of looking at, what else could we do? I mean, there's nothing essentially new in this model. It's kind of, you know, it's pub sub on one level. But we really need to get to the, the space where we can subscribe to data. So the question is, where do we do that? We're not going to be able to fundamentally change every device in the network to suddenly become some crazy publishing element. But we seem to be, as an industry, wandering down the road of a mediation layer. So that's, you know, kind of controller. You know, it's pick your flavor of controller. So as I'm working on open daylight, we kind of thought, well, we need to add some of this capability into, into open daylight. Um, I mean, really what we're looking at is kind of, you know, there's legacy. We've got to do something about legacy. So we need to put in some plugins that can actually do that horrible screen scraping and kind of, you know, collection. But what we're really aiming for is this kind of, it's got a pet name, which is kind of telemetry, you know. So it's telemetry plus. So at this point, we're starting to manipulate some of the devices with NetConf Yang. So what the devices we can change, we're beginning to use NetConf as a comms protocol for notifications. So this, it's based on the uh, IETF RFC, so there's nothing proprietary. There needs to be a rev of that RFC because it doesn't handle subscriptions very well. It does subscriptions per stream, and we really need an ad drop function. So we're going to rev that with the IETF and just make it all open standards. Um, I've sort of said controller, but obviously I'm working on open daylights. So we want the controller to be able to do either polling, but we're really more interested in the polar being able to re program a device and then re receive data from that device. So we've currently got, um, for those of you familiar with XR, we've got a SMU coming out for 532, which is going to enable NetConf notifications for syslog and SNMP traps. And then telemetry is, we're hoping, about two or three months away. So you'll be able to get everything, interface counters, everything, the QoS counters. It's a programmatic, so you program it via NetConf Yang. There will be a Yang model that describes how to do the programming. And from the notification point of view, you'll be able to have n number of screen, streams to drive this over. Again, it's open standard. It's not wedded to open daylight. You don't need an open daylight controller to make this work. You can, you know, any NetConf client, you can build it or buy it. It'll still work. In essence, there's nothing particularly new again on this side. Um, we need to do something with the data. So I'm going to come on to that a bit later. We've had some crazy ideas, and one of which seems to be coming to fruition. But we're seeing a lot of folks who want to subscribe to all of this data. So we really need to put some kind of policy in front of it. We don't have any of this today, really. We have lots of Linux boxes under desks, lots of pinholes in firewalls, and it's just a really a bit hokey. And, and, and we're trying to sort of make a change there. So what did we do? Um, 
It's coming out in lithium, so that's the release this is aimed at. You can, if you take a nightly, find a, uh, a topic broker in there. There is a wiki in Core Tutorials that I've finished a little while ago, and it's, it's, it's written in English. <laughs> it's not a... The programming guide is coming next, but the wiki is, this is really what it does, this is how to consume it. It's incredibly simple, um, and it's de designed to be extremely easy to use. So, I go this way. So really, what did we build? Um, I didn't realize this had animation. Apologies. Just put it all up. That'll do. So the first piece of work we did was actually get some devices that could communicate with NetConf notifications. So as I said, that's XR. So we've been using virtual XR and, and some 9Ks. We've then enhanced the NetConf client in Open Daylight to support NetConf notifications. The way we've done this is actually pretty straightforward. So you use a subscription uh, RPC, and I'll show you that in a moment. And you subscribe to the Yang model that supports notifications on the device. So all the models match all the way up. For a NetConf client, what you get is a very lightweight encapsulation called NetConf. And uh, that allows us to do a top-level aggregation of all the messages from all the devices and get that into the global MD cell. Because it's from there we need a listener process to be able to get out of there. So it's, it's extremely lightweight. So you've really only got a very small hierarchy. You have NCAP type, model name. Now you can have more than one subscription to the same model because there's a field in there for you to subscribe to devices. You can wildcard it or pick your devices. But I guess in the sort of open daylight terminology, it's nodes, so you subscribe to those. It is not an X path. It is not a message bus. Um, we, we don't need to build that. There are some really great message buses out there, and, and uh, if somebody wants to ride it, they're, they're welcome, but we didn't really feel the need. The user agent side, again, is very straightforward. We're using the MD Sal listener process, and against that, you can write very, very simple connectors, and there's a very lightweight RPC mechanism on top to simply glue the subscription with the connector, and the connectors, you, you, just, you basically write them yourself. The documentation for how to do that should be available in about the next week or two when I actually get time to sit down and write it. But um, if you know the code, you can find it in there. When Lithium comes out on the 25th, the aim is to have an XMPP connector, which we already have built, but we just need to qualify it and get it in the build. And it's, for those who are familiar with the process at the moment, it's build freeze time, it's code freeze time, so I cannot put it in. Um, and then off the back of it, you know, we've got a lot of folks that want to do many things with these messages. So we just got, you know, the usual examples. People want billing, you know, statistics for counters. A lot of people want it for analytics. And uh, it's just a very lightweight way of getting in and out. And it's just part, I think, of a, of a telemetry solution. So anything that's using open daylight now has a new capability. This is message bus one. So there, it's the kind of initial play for message bus. It's lacking its own statistic counters, all of those things. So we, um, we are going to be putting that in the next rev, and we're about to sit down and do design criteria for that. It's open source. Anybody wants to you know, get on board with that, it'll be in probably the controller dev uh, mailing list. So I'm going to kick off a thread in that in the next week or two for folks to comment on. So I, I said it's simple. It really is this simple. So if you want to create a topic, so we just call them topics at this point, um, you can do it in Java. Obviously, there's a Java API inside, but just the simple way is to show the, uh, the sort of you know, REST API. You're essentially subscribing to a notification pattern. So the pattern itself is the name of the model. So if, you're, if you have a device that has you know, syslog and it supports notifications, then you're going to subscribe to that Yang model that's on the device. So from an XR point of view, it's going to be you know, syslog.notification. Um, NetConf is a bit of a, an exception, really, because there is some logic at the top of the NetConf connector that as you suck in the model, so you do your get schema, we actually can automatically identify the models that say notification. So we then have this thing called the event source topology, and we just register. Well, it's not really, we don't really register. We just identify that node as being notification capable. Part two of the message bus is going to show you exactly which notifications it's capable of, but today it just says node. 
So you can issue a, a very simple call to say, show me my event source topology, and it'll give you all your nodes. Um, what we didn't want to do was have no way for a developer to figure out what does and doesn't support it and have to start trawling through schemas. And it's just the first, first pass of somebody just being able to say what, what can do notifications. Um, when you issue this call, you're going to get back a topic ID. So a topic ID is just, a, you know, it's a hash created ID. They're all unique. And when you bring up the connector, rather than trying to sort of, you know, figure out where in the MD cell to find it, you have a, you actually have a reference and you can just, I'll show it in the next slide. Um, when you subscribe to a topic, you can have a user agent and then you just subscribe to the topic ID. It's, it really isn't any more complicated than that at the moment. So um, I was going to do this as Q&A as well, so now's probably a good time. If anybody's got any questions, we can take a little break on this one. But nope, everybody loves it. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so this is where I was kind of going to go, OK, now what? So I've, I've got. We've done some key components. We've got some stuff in Cisco routers. We're going to build a legacy plugin. We're going to throw that to the community as well. You know, any and all welcome for help for that. So that would be for something like SNMP polling, syslog receiver, maybe an SNMP receiver if you want to go that route. But again, we'd be able to actually have a plugin for that. We can structure the data inside of that plugin, and it can be Yang model data. So what do we do with all this data? Well, this isn't directly related to open daylight, but um, I thought it's Thursday afternoon, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be here on my own. So I thought I'd throw in a slightly crazy slide. Um, we'd be looking at trying to do something more interesting than we do today with provisioning and service awareness and service discovery. So obviously, this was called sort of you know, notification-based workflows. And I realized as I was kind of writing these slides that it's actually the wrong title. Um, really want to start looking at data set-driven services. So this, this may be a somewhat crazy idea, but great, we can collect data. We can do it through open daylight. We can do it through other collectors. This is not just an open daylight play. We have lots of ways to store data. Everybody's really enjoying the ELK framework for visualization. But starting to see folks taking data and trying to do something with it. So we're using data as a feedback loop for the network. Um, so we've sort of come up with this concept that there's, if you're going to build something that can analyze data, and that you can ask questions of it. What sort of data would we want so that we could maybe define or discover different types of services? So we kind of came up with these three. So the first one really is, is reachable, which is pretty obvious. It's, it's reachability. It's, so it's around topology. It's around you know, available routes. The thing I probably left off there is, is inventory, because inventory is a, is a hidden topology. Um, it may be that it's down for simply administrative reasons. You haven't turned it up because you don't need that wavelength yet, or you don't need that port yet. But the reality is it's actually there. So you'd be able to describe that as a different data set. But these really are just sort of computer science problems at this point. Historical. Well, I, having been a service provider, reachability doesn't really ever tell me anything. It's reachable now. In fact, it isn't reachable now. It was reachable a moment ago. I just have the message now. What I'm really interested in for sort of long tail service provisioning is is this reliably reachable? Now, my choices are, do I start trying to pile this stuff back into the network? Do I need another extended community? Do I need some more stuff in IGP? Uh, there have been many proposals over the years to do stuff like this. Uh, I'm not a fan. I, I, think it's, I, I think it just doesn't belong in the network, even though I'm sure we can do it. So I want to put in some sort of historical stuff. So that's easy. That's telemetry. That's the data I'm collecting. That's counters. That's everything from BGP uptime. It's route changing. Things I can learn from BMP, it's, you know, it's kind of endless. Then this is the kind of wild card. This is sort of influential. So I can put really anything I want in here. And, um, and I was, did some time at a sort of large telco a few years ago. And they wanted to put in utility information because they'd seen a correlation through a guy who worked in the field that every time on certain streets the water company and the gas company dug it up they screwed up and they took out fibers. So they were looking to try and figure out these sorts of data. But we've had, you know, we've had requests from people who've had extreme weather events that are fairly predictable going, we need to put all this in as data sets. So I think we come up with something that looks, and this is a very basic example, that looks like this kind of model. We want to throw this stuff in. 
This is where it gets a bit crazy. We want to do some kind of machine learning. So this is what we've been looking at, is how do I do a very, very lightweight piece of machine learning? And this is, this is why I realized the talk had the wrong name at this point. Um, and if I'm going to turn up a service, I really, I can go and look at my service catalog today, but it, it only tells me a very limited amount of, of information. So if I can now query what is actually a live database, a live set of d data sets with some fairly basic machine learning on top, then I can come up with some interesting answers. And because I have topology, and that's obviously one of the key outputs of, of, of any of my questions, I can actually bring up a path through the network, or I can bring up a service chain, or I can decide that really this was hopeless and I should maybe not, not proceed. Um, so we've come up with a very simple question to ask this, this data, which is, I am a, I want to do something so that. So I could say, I am a DNS server. You know, I want to service this area or this domain or this subset. You know, so that, and then there's 100 things I could fill in there. So we're going to start with some real simple examples of, you know, I am a dude in London that wants a pseudo wide Frankfurt kind of thing. Um, and then I'm going to come up with more than one answer. And I think that's, that's what we really want to come out with here is a number of answers, some of which will be horrific and you would never use them. So then the evaluation then comes back to policy. So this is no different than we do today with kind of BSS systems. They have, you know, a service contract that's in there and they have policy. So now all I have to do really is marry the two things together. Um, and as I said, I really only had seven slides. Um, this is kind of what we want to do, really, is we, we, if we're going down a modeled route, whether it's open daylight or whether it's models on the device, I, I have already abstracted most of the things that used to cause me pain. So assuming I find an acceptable answer, it, it must contain topology, path, and resources, because otherwise the answer is not acceptable. Um, and at which point, as I say, we just program the elements. So the piece that's missing from here really is some sort of you know, diagram of how we're going to do that. But if we're looking at open daylight and some of the applications people are developing, well, they have no knowledge of network. They're really looking for a set of instructions. They've already figured out how to program these devices. So if we can query this infrastructure, come back with a query that contains what they need, we've got an abstracted layer and a set of programmers that understand that, we can now do some provisioning. So we're trying to trying, as I say, because this is kind of a sort of experiment, we're trying to kind of figure out this sort of feedback loop of the more data you put in, the more interesting answers you can get out, the more you can do on the provisioning side, because we have a programmatic world now that we didn't have before. So it's, a, it's quite a short talk. This is kind of it. But um, I just thought, well, it's Thursday afternoon. Let's talk about something that's a bit mad and, um, and, and see where that gets to. So uh, any questions or? Am I, am I crazy? <laughs> um, do we have a microphone if we, if we need one? Thank you. I think I can see you've got a question. You're like, uh, you're, gonna, you're just going to tell me to go away or? On the previous. Oh. I don't know if it's on. We have, we have no sound it, on the mic. It's on now, I think. Oh. Uh, the previous part, you were mentioning XNM, XMPP. W what, how did that play into the NetConf Yang? It doesn't. That's, doesn't? The, that's the nice part about it. So, so what, are you, what are you doing with XMPP? So everybody asks for the same. When we started doing this from the open source community point of view, almost every email I got from folks was like, can we have an XMPP connector? Because they, they wanted some way of, they didn't want to go down to the network device. People like Arista support XMPP as kind of a, a management protocol. And, you know, at Cisco we don't, and I don't, I don't know if Juniper does other thing they do, but for some reason all the folks wanted XMPP as their kind of first, first go around. So I'm like, okay, well we'll write an XMPP connector that can be attached to one of the subscriptions. So we, we have a working demo, but I seem to have issues running videos, so I, otherwise I would have showed it. But um, So yeah, we have this working, simple eJava server XMPP, and um, you can put in, there's two ways to do it. In version one of the message bus, the data is only XML. So what we really need is JSON. So we'll probably do something with that. But when we wrote the plugin, we put a transformer in there. So it just goes from XML to JSON. And people were just loving it. They were like, oh, wow, I can use this data out of the box. And lots of guys had written you know, little XMPP or used XMPP libraries for application X. So uh, it was just an easy win.
So, so this would, would, if you wanted to, you would use NetComp Yang instead of the XMPP model if you wanted to get notifications that way? I, I, it's, it's a connector. You can build any connector you want. We've got right. folks who are building uh, M, you know, MQPP. There's another guy who wants a very particular, um, I don't know why he wants it. He wants something very particular for WSO2. And we're going to do a hackathon at the IETF. So we're going to try and get this framework all documented. And uh, you know, people can write their own connectors on the side. So this is, this is the way out of the box. But having said that, um, they're just, it's just an SPI at the bottom of um, Open Daylight. So you could reconsume that with your XMPP plugin and say, well, I want to feed stuff into Open Daylight with XMPP. I don't, I don't quite know why, but I'm sure someone's going to think of a use case. But you're just consuming APIs. You could be a listener or you can be a producer. But that it gets you away from the current um, producer and consumer model that's in MD Sal, where you have to be a known producer and a known consumer. And that was the reason for putting the topic broker in, is that you can subscribe to a topic because you won't necessarily know who the producer is. Otherwise, you'd have to know every router, and it would, it would just never work. So, so everything's going to the same, regardless of the connector type, all of the messaging is going to go to the same spot? It goes into the sort of user agent framework, and then you subscribe to whatever you want. So uh, it's, yeah, you're not going to, you're not suddenly going to get a flood of everything that's in uh, on the global MD Sal. You just pick a subscription and use the topic ID. So you, you, you create a topic, and then you subscribe it to one or more connectors. Cool. OK. I think, I don't know, I have no idea what time we're at. So you get, you get five minutes of your life back. Thank you guys for coming. I know it's a Thursday afternoon. I appreciate it.